I'm Heidi and I'm going to show you how to make a Rey costume from Star Wars The Force Awakens. This is a costume that anyone can make. You don't have to already know how to sew, although it will help. All of these are items that you can get at a thrift store probably pretty easily if you don't want to do any sewing. The main thing that I want to do in this video series is show you how to take things that you might have got at a modern day Goodwill or brand new fabric from the store and then turn that into something that looks like it actually belongs in the Star Wars universe. Um, it has a sense of authenticity and realness to it. So I am a seamstress and I did sew this costume, but you can get away without sewing if that's not something that you want to do. If you do sew your own costume, then you have a lot more control over the fit and the size and the color and details like that. These clothes are about as simple as they come, so if you're interested in learning how to sew, this is a really great place to start. Whether you're buying your clothes or making them yourself, having the right fabric is a really big part of getting the right look for this costume. All of Ray's clothes uh, use natural fibers, which are linen, cotton, hemp, raw silks, anything with a similar texture. Ray's accessories, such as her cuff and her belt, uh, are made out of leather, and she uses wool for the boots, as well as the hair ties that are wrapped around each one of her buttons. I chose natural fibers with a lot of uh, visual texture, such as the weave and this, this crinkle pattern. This one's actually a suiting. I was really attracted to the color as well as the texture of this fuzzier side which is what I used for the outside. The main identifying feature of Ray's shirt is the round split neckline. She wears a tank top but you could just as easily cut the sleeves off of a shirt and then leave the edges raw. If you're planning on sewing your own shirt, you can alter a simple shirt pattern or drape fabric over a dress form to fit your own body. I did make my own pattern for her shirt. I used this linen fabric that is woven, it does not stretch, although it looks like the shirt that she's wearing in the movie most likely is a stretchy fabric. So to accommodate that, I included an invisible zipper down the side under the left armpit. On top of the shirt, Ray has this long drape fabric that is a continuous piece going from one side, crossing over in a loop, and then going uh, back around to the front. So this is all one continuous piece, it's about six yards of fabric to do as a single thing with no seams in it. If you don't mind having seams, you can buy three yards and then split it down the center. It is stitched up here at the shoulder, which gives it this pleated look and helps it hang properly across the front of the chest. The pants that Ray wears end just below the knee, which is a really simple alteration if you need to shorten a pair of pants that you find somewhere. Or you could just take a very simple pants pattern such as one for pajama pants or scrubs and then shorten that below the knee and just assemble it the same way that you normally would. Ray's clothing looks very beige altogether, but if you look closely it's actually different colored earth tones. So if you're having trouble finding exactly the right color, there are a couple of easy ways of fabric dyeing that will help you get exactly the right hue. Tea dyeing and coffee dyeing are both very simple methods of coloring fabric using materials that you probably already have laying around your house. The process for both is really simple. You just need to heat up a large, strong batch of either beverage, let your fabric soak in the tea or the coffee for at least an hour to get a noticeable difference in the color. Higher temperatures and longer soak times are gonna help you get darker, more vibrant colors. It also is important that you're using natural fabrics for this. If you're trying to use a synthetic fabric, it probably won't make a noticeable difference. Natural fibers such as linen, cotton, or silk are much, much more receptive to dyes than anything that is man-made like nylon or polyester or whatever else. The exact shade that you're going to get uh, by using coffee or tea is going to vary by the blend of that particular beverage. So for instance, if you're using a tea that has a lot of berries in it, you might get a more pink or reddish hue than something that is just a straight dark brown tea or a dark coffee. This is some of the white cotton gauze that I bought in order to make this drape that she is wearing. And this is what it looks like after uh, tea dyeing. I also did a little bit more distressing on this so it's a little darker. This is the same exact type of fabric that has been dyed using coffee so you can get an idea of some of the different hues that you can achieve using different types of beverages. You can control the results by trying out different colors of coffee or tea blends. Once your costume is assembled, you still need to distress it. We'll do that in our next video. If you're wondering how to make her wig, her boots, her cuff, or her belt, I have videos on those as well, so check the description below for links. Thank you so much for watching, and be sure to subscribe for more cosplay tutorial videos. See you next time. Bye.
your costume isn't finished until it has a little dirt on it. Check out my video on how to distress your costume.